what is up guys my name is Barry Michael Doyle and in this episode we're doing challenge number seven of the JavaScript arcade solutions that we've been going through uh, this challenge is called the almost increasing sequence so let's dive right in and see what it entails right so here we are at the almost increasing sequence challenge which is in the edge of the ocean section of the arcade introduction and let's read the description of this problem so given a sequence of integers as an array Determine whether it is possible to obtain a strictly increasing sequence by removing no more than one element from the array. So for sequence 1, 3, 2, 1, the output should be almost increasing sequence false. Because you can't take out one element here for it to actually be an increasing sequence. Uh, it says here, yeah, there's no one element in this array that can be removed in order to get a strictly increasing sequence. For sequence 1, 3, 2, the output should be almost increasing sequence with the sequence true because you can remove three from the array and get the strictly increasing sequence one and two. Alternately, you can remove two from the array over here and you'll get the strictly increasing sequence one or three. So that's a pretty basic challenge, or well, basic to understand, hard to implement. The time limit as usual is four seconds. The input is an array of integers, which is labeled sequence. The guaranteed constraints is the sequence length will be between two elements long and a ridiculous amount of elements long. And then the elements themselves, their values will be either minus 10 to the power of 5 or positive 10 to the power of 5 between that range, uh, including them as well. So here we have the output boolean. Well, the output is a boolean. So return true if, the possible, if it is possible to remove one element from the array in order to get a strictly increasing sequence. Otherwise, return false. So let's dive straight into it. Now, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that because I really like my ES6. So let's make things a little bit cleaner. Back to 2017 we're at. And the way I want to solve this problem is, I don't even know how to really explain this. I'm going to have something called strikes. And I'm going to set that to zero. And then I'm going to have a maximum value which initially is going to be set to math to the power. So this is going to be negative 10 to the power of 5, because that's the lowest we can get over here. You can also say like negative infinity, and that actually works as well as a value, but let's not make it smaller than it needs to be. And then we're going to record a second maximum value, which is equal to also the lowest number that it could possibly be. And there we go, we have our set variables here. Now, what I want to do is basically every time something doesn't fit into the sequence, I want to add one to strike. And then if strike is strikes is is like, well, basically, if it's smaller than or equal to one, it should return true. Because if that means only one issue you can remove one so it will work so it is an almost increasing sequence and if zero then you can remove any element and it will still be an almost increasing sequence so that's pretty much fine and solves our problem now how are we going to increment this strike well let's map through the sequence so we will go sequence.map and then we will take each element and then do something to the element now first thing i want to check is if the element is bigger than max then I want to say maximum is equal to the element. Ah, it's just called Adam. Uh, and then I want to put another little else if in here. Else if the, actually no, just an else and say strikes plus plus. I'll explain to you why. Wait, I'm calling this strikes. Yeah, I need to call this strikes. What am I doing? Because there might be more than one strike, so that makes sense. So... I don't know why this is not green. Anyway, oh, there we go, it's fixed. Let's run the test. Now, I'm warning you this won't fully work, but it will work for most of our cases. And that's why I've got the second max input here. So here we have a bunch of test cases that actually worked. So example, if you had one, three, two, one, it would have counted properly for the case of that. It would have said, no, these two are two strikes and it won't work. But then you get the case over here, like what if you start with a high number and then you have your other values and all of these other cases as well, they're just, they won't work completely. 
So the way you solve this is to add a second little else statement in here. So we'll put that down there. And we'll say else if. And this is where we're going to do some cool magic stuff. No, it's actually not that great. This is where we also just want to check if the element is bigger than the second max. And that's where this comes in. So first of all, before we set the maximum to the element, we want to set the second max to what the previous maximum was. So the second biggest value is going to be that max. Now we want to say, okay, if the element is bigger than max, then cool, that's fine. Uh, change everything. And then we want to have the else if. Now if the element is bigger than the second biggest number, then you want to actually make a strike as well. Like you want to avoid it if it's, if it's not bigger than the second biggest, because then it's only one strike. So we add another strike in here too. I find it really difficult to explain this challenge, but in my head it makes fine. It makes sense. See, so can't even speak properly. So there we go. We record strikes. So basically, if I can give you an example here, um, the first tests were pretty easy to prove. Let's say we had this example here. So I'm going to make some space here and say we had the array 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We want to look through this and we'll map the elements. So the first element will be 10. So here 10, currently the max is like negative almost infinity. So is it bigger than the max? Yes. So we're going to set the second element, second max is going to equal 10. And then we're going to say, or no, actually second max is currently still negative, like almost infinity. And then max is going to equal 10, our element, because we first set it to the previous. And then that runs, so we're done looking at, at this, and we go repeat the whole process for the next element. So the next element is 1. And here we see, is it bigger than the max? Um, well, currently the biggest number is 10, so no, it's not. So we have to look at the next else if. And that's where we see, hey, the element is bigger than the second maximum, because the second maximum is negative infinity. So now we say the new max is equal to, what do we want to say? The new max is going to be equal to one because we're setting it over here. And oh, remember back here, we want to say strikes plus plus strikes equals one. So we know there's one issue here and over here, everything else strikes still equals one and second max is still going to equal negative infinity or will it even yeah no second max is going no not even second max is negative infinity still because we didn't actually do anything I ignore my bad spelling here because we didn't go over this we only went over this so only once we go to two we're going to see the next time this runs through is element bigger than max well currently max is one so yes it is bigger than one so now we set second max is going to equal two and then we're going to say max is going to equal two and strikes is still equal to one and then from here on it's pretty easy can't even spoil yet three you're going to do the same process second max is now going to equal three and max will equal three and strikes which i keep spelling wrong everywhere is still going to equal one and if you look at the rest of this four and five is going to be the same so strikes is always going to be one so at the end of this whole sequence running through the elements we're going to return strikes is either equal to or smaller than one and currently it's one so it should return true and in this case it's not because that was the previous time we run it so now we run it again we run our tests and everything passed which is really cool so i'm gonna get rid of that so we can submit a nice clean solution and here's our fully finished solution, almost increasing sequence. That wasn't too difficult, was it? Okay, it's really hard to explain, but I hope in general you liked the video. Um, if you haven't hit the subscribe button over here, please hit it. And if you do like the video, leave a like, leave a comment as well. Um, if you're expecting React Native tutorials, I'm sorry, I'm still working on it. It should be up either tomorrow or Saturday, but if not, tomorrow you'll get another wonderful video of these code fights. Cool. Cheers, guys. Keep well. Bye.